Hey guys, so today I'm doing the demonstration and overview for my Sketchbox Basic and my Sketchbox Premium boxes. Um, this month's theme is pastels and both boxes include sets of pan pastels. The basic box, basic box includes a two color set. The premium box includes a five color set. So I'm going to go over the prices and materials included in the basic box first. So I received my basic box a few days ago and I wanted to go ahead and start reviewing it since I'm leaving town and I need to get as much done before I leave as possible because I'll be gone for a while. So um, this is a little bit of an unusual review simply because it varies from how the other ones are usually run. And my phone does not need to be in the picture. So price wise. We've got a two color pen pastel set. It's exclusive to Sketchbox. At least that's what the sticker says. Um, and the colors I received were both very beautiful colors. One is a phthalo green, so it's like a bluish green. And the other is, that's on the bottom of this, turquoise. And for pan pastels, I, so the pan pastel site only lists online retailers. It doesn't list an MSRP. These are five, nine, uh, five twenty nine for each cake at Jerry's Artorama or five forty five for each cake at Dick Blick. The Marvy Le Pin brush pin is also available in um, technical pin sizes like 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.03, 0 0.85, 0 0.5, and 0.3. Um, and it is 159 at Jerry's Artorama. And I have, I've used many Le Pin products. This is the pigment ink. Um, and I haven't used this one yet. The set of soft SOFFT art sponges has four different sponges um four different shapes um they are 319 at cheap joe's or 261 at dick blake so our high end total for this box which i will remind you costs 25 dollars and then five dollars to ship inside the u.s so it's 30 dollars total the high end is 17.52 the low end is 1662 So I'm going to switch over now to my premium box and then I'll demonstrate everything together. This is my premium box. The Pam Pastel five piece set also includes a little sample set of tools underneath, which I thought was cute and interesting. I love, I love the packaging. Um, this set, they don't have a set like this because this is exclusive to Sketchbox. Um, this most the most comparable set I could find was a five piece set that didn't come with the brushes and it didn't come with these colors. And that was $20 and 59 cents on Dick Blick. Now the soft art sponge set, again, 319 at Chief Joe's or 261 at Dick Blick. The soft knife set was 786 at Dick Blick. The Faber Castell pastel pencil is they did have an MSRP on the Faber Castell site and hmm oh okay yeah I'm sorry so but the best you could really do was three white gray and black for seven fifty um or you can get just one for dollar sixty two on Dick Blick and the Pit Pin Artist Brush Pin was three sixty on the Faber Castell site or two oh five on the Dick Blick site. So on the high end, the premium box is worth $37.71. Now the premium box is $35 plus $5 shipping. So it's $40 total. And um, I think $37.71 is perfect. Perfect. Even better than expected. Because I usually expect the box to be at least worth, you know, $30. Now on the low end, that can't be right. I must have miscalculated something because my low end number is, yeah, there we go, 3473. I had written down 2473, so I need to fix that because that is not correct. So even on the low end, the premium box this month is definitely worth it. 
Um, the basic box, in my opinion, is, you know, not not worth it. It's it's ten dollars cheaper than the basic than the premium box, but it comes with so much less. And I sort of theorize that maybe Sketchbox is funding the more expensive premium box with the anemic basic box. And this month sort of ties in with that. So I have mentioned in prior videos that I don't really use pastels very often. Um, I do know that they like a textured paper. So this is Winsor Newton watercolor paper. It's a cold press watercolor paper. And I'm going to use this for the demonstration. So I'm going to start by uncapping my pan pastels and zooming in. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with these, but uh, those of us who wear makeup are definitely definitely familiar with this format. And I think this is an ingenious format for um, this type of product. And here's the larger set of pan pastels. I mean, look at, look at that yellow, isn't that gorgeous? I blue too. And you know, those of you who do check out the blog posts, that that clickety sound is my cell phone camera. I'm taking photos. So um I think I'm gonna stick to one set of the soft sponges because I, I do have sort of limited room here. Trying to get everything as organized neatly as possible. So let's let's first of all let's talk about the non-pastels since I think the pastels are going to take up the lion's share of this program. This is the Marvy Le Pen. On the back, it shows the different sizes. This is a pigment pen. In the past, I have reviewed their markers. I have reviewed their alcohol pen. I've reviewed their little fine point lip pens. So this is the first pigmented ink. And that's the brush tip. Let me go grab one of my, this is a Le Pen Le Plume fine brush. It looks like they utilize the same or almost the same, very similar brush tips. The real difference between the um, mark, the alcohol fine brush, and the Marvy Le Plume, or I'm sorry, Le Pen technical drawing pen, is this metal in metal encased cap. And oh, I don't know where that came from. That must be a little bit of pastel. It is a fiber tip. It's a fairly flexible fiber tip, and it's pigment ink. So that means when it's fully dry, it should be um, marker proof. But until then, it is not waterproof. And this is just plain water. Um, so I'm going to allow this section here to dry for 24 hours. And then we're going to go over it with an alcohol marker. And we'll test that. Now, we also have the Faber-Castell um, pit pin with the brush tip. This is from my premium box. And I'm very familiar with these. The fiber tip on this is less flexible than the fiber tip on the Le Pen. And this too is also not waterproof until dry. But once it's dry, it is completely waterproof. So, you know, more you know i am always very interested oh shoot i got my finger in the pastel and i ruined the pretty surface i am always very interested in what my materials are made out of because that affects what i can use them with so i am going to put these to the side for now now next we have a Conti uh, uh, Conti Paris 
uh, pastel pencil. And this is a white sort of chalky pastel. It's not really going to show up on here. And we also have a Faber Castell Pit Pastel. And I'm not really sure why the Pit Pastel is more premium than the Conti Pastel. Both have a chalky sort of feeling to them. And uh, when I pull out these, the sock cover, I will test the blendability over there. So these are the soft um, knife covers I received in my premium box along with the plastic knife. Um, you could probably put these covers over your paint knives if they're small spatula tips like this. The only ones that came in this set are the triangular point and those seem to just slip right over. Hmm. Is that really how that goes? That doesn't seem right. I thought it would slip all the way over it. Maybe I'm just not. Yeah, I see. It's like a sock. You got to pull it tight. And that way it's not going to go anywhere when you're scrubbing it. So there's a little bit of give to these. And um, just like with the pan pastels, those of you who wear makeup might be familiar with this type of sponge. It's very similar to a makeup sponge. And you can smear the Faber-Castell a little bit. Supposedly you can clean this off onto a um, paper towel and that they're reusable. So that pretty much leaves us with the soft sponges and the pastels. So these larger sponges are even more reminiscent of makeup sponges. They're a dense rubbery foam, not too, too much give, but there is some give. And I think I actually have some cheap makeup sponges from Walmart that I bought to use with um, Posca's. So I'll go grab those and I'll be right back. All right, so I went and grabbed some inexpensive makeup brushes that I purchased for art purposes. And um, I also grabbed these like cheap eyeshadow applicators, again, purchased for art purposes. So we can sort of compare the products. Now, I don't think I paid a more, I don't think I paid more than a dollar for these. So these are not expensive at all. Now, these white um, wedge applicators um, are a little less dense than the soft applicators. They do have a similar rubbery feel. They do have a similar porous texture. So I think I'm going to play with these as well. Then I also have these inexpensive foam eyeshadow applicators and they seem extremely similar to the soft applicator. I mean, clearly these are cheap ones because this has like a little metal ferrule to hold the, the sponge tightly in place. And these just have like, they're like little foam socks on top of little plastic sticks. But they're very, very similar. The foam on the soft applicator has a little more give than the foam on the cheap uh, makeup sponge. So I'm going to start playing around with these pastels on this watercolor paper. And this is cold press watercolor paper. So, um, you know, it does have a little bit of texture to it. It's also a little thicker. I don't own any pastel paper, so, <laughs> you know, I can't demonstrate that. Um, I also have on hand some of these foam blenders. These are for use with alcohol markers, but the foam is very, very similar to the foam um, of these sort of applicators. A little softer, but I thought it would make for a great comparison. And we're not really reviewing the soft tools today, but I know many of my artist friends are working on a budget. So, you know, wherever we can cut corners, wherever we can find a cheaper substitute, that doesn't ruin the archival quality of our work is definitely worth exploring. I also have a bad tendency for things like this. And honestly, the soft applicators are really not that expensive. These are like, I think it was $2 or two something. Let me, let me check. These are 
let's see let's see come on come on yeah 319 for the set of four or 261 so they're not they're not like precious um and probably what made this expensive is it also came with a palette knife but again you probably don't need to buy the palette knife if you already own them but you know um for those of us who don't necessarily live near art stores, being able to run out to Dollar Tree, Target, or Walmart to pick up some applicators might be really handy. So I think I'm going to start with the soft wedge. Start out with this phthalo green. As you can see, you're getting a really rich sort of color saturation picked up on the sponge. Ooh, look at that. Man, whoever figured this out is just so clever. Because this is such a, a handy way to do large washes or large fields of color. And pick up some of that blue. I mean, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And this allows you to blend it as you apply it. So it is very similar to painting with pastels. So speaking of painting with pastels, let's get all that black out. I'm sure there will be some staining involved. Pick up some of this gorgeous yellow. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? course uh, where I had originally marked in with the black let me zoom in so you guys can see where I had originally gone in with the black a little bit I am getting some some schmutz and a little seems to go a pretty long way all right now let's pick up a tiny bit of the orange with my one small soft applicator works quite well so now it's time to use the cheap stuff right okay so this is the walmart wedge it doesn't have much structural support so usually when i work with these for art i bend them in half and use them like that so that's how i'm gonna use it here let's go with this ultramarine that's off camera all right nice color saturation just from a layman's uh, noodling around with these, these seem to work pretty similarly. They have less structural integrity. So like these could be just like the workhorses, whereas you use the nicer ones for um, more specific things, maybe. Kind of like buying an inexpensive mop for your washes, your water. I realize some of you guys are not watercolorists for your watercolor washes then we can fold it the other direction pick up some of this green okay so so far the cheap little makeup sponge works okay let's try the cheap little foam dauber and i'll pull out because i realize you guys can't see much this just goes on your fingertip seems to work just as well And lastly, the cheap eyeshadow applicator. Let's go back to this beautiful turquoise. I mean, the applicator itself is pretty crummy and it's a little annoying to handle, but if you had some slightly better ones than the, you know, the Dollar Tree lowest of the low, you could definitely use these. So, um, the colors so far are very buttery. Um, they really apply very similarly to how I remember makeup applying. Um, I don't wear it so much anymore, but when I used to wear it a lot, they handle a lot like makeup, which I think is really ingenious because it is clear that whoever came up with this way of handling pastels um, was covering large areas 
needed to do very clean blends, maybe painting a lot of, maybe rendering a lot of landscapes. Um, and I think you can probably use pan pastels in conjunction with other pastels. So having just a few pan pastels would be fantastic because you can lay down these large expanses of color and then add detail in with your other pastels and blend them out using the soft tools. So, um, even though I am not a pastel artist, I think these are really cool. I'm really excited about them. But I would like to know what you guys think, especially those of you who are pastel artists. Do you guys use pan pastels? Have you heard of pan pastels? What do you think about them? Please let me know in the comments below because I'm always interested in hearing from other artists. Um, going back to the Sketchbox versus Sketchbox thing, I definitely think this month's premium box was worth it. But I don't necessarily think the basic box was really worth it. Um, the, the included inking pins are both fine. Um, oh, yeah, they said we could use the white, the white and the black. Realize I didn't actually do that. So on this textured watercolor paper, the white, there's enough grit that the white does stand out. And let's try the black. Oh, definitely. And... Um, you're going to want to spray these with like a spray fixative when you're finished with them because otherwise it'll kind of smear all over the place. Um, I definitely think the premium box was worth it this month. Um, I don't think the basic box was though. And, um, you know, it's hard to justify getting a subscription for something when you don't know what's coming this month. And when you don't, you know, the months are not necessarily uh not every premium box is going to be worth the money so i'm really excited to see the increase in value this month these are definitely artist grade materials i was excited to see that the basic box got artist grade materials because they well, they got a smaller number but still pan pastels um and in previous basic boxes they basically send student grade materials which for the $30 price tag it's kind of insulting but it's exciting to see that the quality has really gone up and I look forward to playing with these guys in the future um, and creating something with this set or well, with both sets I think the challenge I'm going to do for this month is going to be like last month's challenge where I use materials from both boxes but I don't really feel the need to um other than you know augmenting with a few other a few other sponges i don't really feel the need to go outside of what they've sent me and augment it now maybe if i had a bunch of pastels and i might have to go digging to see if i have any other pastels um i would i might feel differently then because i'd have pastels to play with but as it is i am pretty dang satisfied with this set and I look forward to sharing my challenge video with you guys. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you are interested in Sketchbox, I hope this video helped inform you of what to expect, what comes in your Sketchbox, what the materials tend to cost. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit like. Consider subscribing to my channel because I do Sketchbox Basic versus Art Snacks reviews every month um, for all of 2016. There's already a backlog of those and you can check that out in my Sketchbox versus Art Snacks playlist. If you're only interested in Sketchbox, I also just have a Sketchbox playlist where everything is, you know, neat and tidy and all in the same, all in one, one place. So you can just watch those, put those on if you want. Um, and let's see. Oh, <laughs> I would super appreciate it if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful if you shared it with your friends. Um, sharing my content to your friends, your family, your audience helps me out a lot and it doesn't take anything away from you. In fact, it adds value to you because you are now seen as a content curator in addition to if you do share your own content, being a content provider. So um, I love sharing other people's stuff to my Twitter, to my Tumblr, to my Facebook, especially if I know my friends and family will enjoy it. So, you know, and it's always been beneficial for me. I don't ever regret doing that. Um, oh, one last thing. If you enjoy content like this, it does get expensive to make this sort of content. So if you'd like to help me continue making this sort of stuff in the future, please check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash NatoSoup for information on how to join the NatoSoup community and how to help me create even more content. I'm Becca Hilburn. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.